Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there, it's Nikki Kinzer. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello, Hello. everyone. Welcome to this great, great show today. Oh, we've got a very, a very good show today. I'm very excited about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think we have a lot of business to cover before we dig in. Do we have anything to talk about? Any registrations? Anything that I'm going to miss if I don't ask you? Yes. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> yes, there is an ADHD expo going on. And, uh, and of course, you ask me and I don't have the information right in front of me. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to put the link into the show notes. But it's this very important ADHD expo. It's going to be happening in October uh, in celebration of uh, ADHD Awareness Month. And uh, you and I are one of the presentations that are going to be on one of those days. There's 31 um, experts speaking and Pete and I are one of those presentations. I I don't often get my face on these expo things with you. This I know. Is, this you was did. pretty exciting. I feel a little bit like I've arrived in this yes. community. Yes. So, I know. It's exciting. Just saying. <laughs> just Pete's saying. face is on the advertisement. I know, but That's I have big. no, I think I have no beard in that picture. I People must think I'm just sort of facial hair schizophrenic. Uh, <laughs> it just, who knows what is going to happen with my face who on knows? any given day. Yeah. I think we should dig into this show, uh, Nikki Kinzer. We're going to talk all about listening, mindful listening, listening with ADHD. I'm very excited about it. Before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website, or of course, you can subscribe to the mailing list and get an email each time a new episode is released. And if you have been touched by anything that we have done over the last how, I don't even remember how many years. It's that long. It is so many of the years that we've been doing this show, uh, nearly 400 episodes. If you've been touched by anything that we've done we s deeply hope that you will consider uh, joining us over at patreon.com slash the adhd podcast for a couple of bucks a month you can support the show you can uh, ensure you can help ensure continued development uh, and that we continue to uh, do this show grow this show take part in more uh, expos and events and and continue to create resources for the adhd community we sure uh, hope and appreciate your support there patreon.com slash the adhd podcast and you'll even get in to our discord chat server which is amazing uh and uh, these uh, the uh, folks who have just really <laughs> they jumped in with both feet and arms and legs and head and have made this a real home and i am i am so gratified uh, just this morning jumping in and seeing the level of support that they're providing one another uh in in difficult times and and um, and provided me just last week you know what i got blood drawn and i passed out uh and oh, even no. that even that's a thing that they were supportive about. I, you people are amazing. Uh, that's it is, right. It is, I told you to take the day off. I They're should, like, Pete, yes, take the day take off. The day. <laughs> <laughs> it is, You're it done is, with your day. I'm not kidding. It's one, one of pass my... pass out is enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's for the birds. Uh, but this uh, this is one of my very favorite communities to be a part of. And so I, I hope that you will consider for that reason alone to uh, support us at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast and, and join the club there. It's it's really great. Uh, OK, uh, this is the big one. Rebecca Shafir is a speech language pathologist and ADHD coach. She's been that for over 25 years. She's a colleague of the great Dr. Ned Hallowell, who has uh, is uh, clearly our best friend who's never met us yet. Uh, she's yes. also the author of The Zen of Listening, Mindful Communication in the Age of Distraction. My goodness, it's now in its eighth printing. Uh, yes. Fantastic. Uh, Rebecca has over 30 years experience working with students and professionals to improve well-being, personal productivity, and communication. Her website is mindfulcommunication.com and uh, as somebody who is married to a speech language pathologist, I'm going to go ahead and vouch for the the high quality of the SLP community. I'm very, very glad uh, to welcome <laughs> Rebecca Shafir to the show today. Rebecca, how are you? I'm fine, Pete. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's, uh, it's really great to have you on the show. And we're, we want to talk about uh, uh, listening. We, we, this has been something that we've been thinking about for some time. Nikki, uh, kick us off. Why, why did this come up for you? 
Well, you know, it, it's, I, I think it was actually a suggestion from our Patreon group, if I remember correctly, but some, somewhere somebody was saying, how, how can I become a better listener? And, uh, it's interesting because when I look back at all of the different topics that we've talked about, Pete, I don't remember us specifically talking about listening, at least as the, as the sole topic. And so, um, I was thinking about doing this and then I found out about Rebecca and her book and I thought, oh my gosh, this is perfect, perfect timing, uh, perfect for our listeners, uh, I think, to, to learn a lot from you, Rebecca. And uh, I know that, you know, in your book, The Zen of Listening, Mindful Communication, I would like to ask you what mindful listening is. And, and let's start there. What does it That's mean? The great way to start. And, you know, you're looking for your listeners to be touched by certain subjects. Well, this is one that touches a lot of our, our heartstrings. And that is the, that ability to listen and to listen well. But what does that mean? You know, you ask people, what is mindful listening? And you'll, you'll get, you know, 11 different de- definitions. But this is mine. And I'd like your take on it, Nikki and Pete. And that is, it, it, it's four major characteristics. Number one, to be able to get the whole message, not just the words, which are very limiting, but the feelings behind the words. To try to piece together the uh, uh, visual cues, the expression, the tone of voice, all these things that are really the heart of the message, not just the words. Secondly, to be able to sustain attention over time. And this is where a lot of our clients with ADHD suffer the most, is that ability to sustain through, you know, maybe several minutes of heartfelt, deep, informative conversation. So sustaining attention over time is the second one. The third one is making that speaker feel valued and respected for their point of view. One of the resistances, and I hope we'll get to those because there's several resistances to listening, is feeling that you have to agree with that person if you listen, which is false. But to at least let them know that you valued and respected their point of view is very important. And then fourthly, listening to yourself. That's the hardest thing. I'm still working on that. Mm -hmm. You know, that ability... To choose your words carefully, to keep in mind the sensitivities of the person you are speaking to. And I think that's often neglected. But those are the four characteristics I like to see in myself and anyone who I consider a mindful listener. You know, it, I, I have to ask, because every one of those four characteristics seem to have one thing in common, and it's a thing that I my sense is, my experience is, that people living with ADHD struggle with, and that is um, struggling with empathy, right? And, and And I don't mean necessarily a lack of empathy. Sometimes it's just a lack of empathetic regulation, that you can't always focus because you're focused on uh, the shame or judgment that you may feel because you're not a good listener or you're overly empathetic because you're hyper focusing on what they're trying to say and you lose track of being a participant in the conversation. Is that something that you experienced? Does that resonate at all? Oh, Peter, absolutely. With ADD or without, we have a tremendous amount of internal distractions going on when we're trying to listen to someone. So you can imagine a person with ADHD not only has the usual stuff, you know, thinking about past experiences with this person or worrying what they're going, but the, just what you said, that whole list of concerns, of, uh, of self-concerns, how am I being perceived? Am I being accepted? Am I judged? The shame, the guilt, all that business that's happened before in conversations that make the thought of having to sit and listen to someone, particularly in a not so positive discussion, very daunting. Exactly. You nailed it. What is the difference between mindful listening and active listening? Oh boy, thank you for mentioning that one. Active listening is what's typically taught in companies. In fact, it was one of the things that made me want to write the book on mindful listening and really study it because active listening, I have found from people who have taken these classes, is ways to act like you are listening. Totally. Versus, oh, my goodness. That's exactly what it's oh, like. like. As long as you, yeah. And, 
And yeah, as long as you're leaning so forward, fun. you're probably listening, right? <laughs> it's just, I know all the signals to listen. And if you have ADHD, of course, you know, the sim- signals because you've been faking it all your life. <laughs> right. That is so true. <laughs> that is it. So my, my, uh, point, my purpose in writing this book was to differentiate myself from that theory and to point out that mindful listening is really authentic listening. Yeah, we tend to do those things when we're listening, but they're not the priorities. You know, those thinking of those movements and those uh, gestures and all is not where our mind should be at. It should be at trying to understand where that person is coming from and listening with curiosity. That's mindful listening over active listening. I like the the way that you said uh, listening with curiosity. I think that makes a big difference uh, to just be curious about what the person is saying and not making any kind of judgment on it right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what are some calm again, I want to go straight into how we can improve this, but I, I want to still hold myself back a little bit. What are some common like communication pitfalls that you have found in your research and working with clients and mm-hmm. what do they struggle with the most? Okay. Well, number one, what, one of the things that made me write this book was because people didn't like to talk about listening. It was a scary thing for them, which is fascinating, isn't it? Like, uh, why wouldn't you want to learn how to listen? Well, here are some reasons that keep people from wanting to do so. It means I'm going to have to agree with them, right? Wrong. Listening takes a lot of time, doesn't it? Oh, no. If you can give people five minutes of wholehearted, authentic listening, it's more than many people get in a lifetime. What about, what about it? Just not to interrupt your train of thought, but you know, ADHD, what about folks who hear that five minutes and are terrified by that? Okay. Well, bring it down to two minutes because that's still more than the average person (laughs) gets in a lifetime. (laughs) Well, and I mean, a common need for all of us and especially with our, our relationships is Mm -hmm. to be heard. We want to be heard, regardless if you agree with me or if if I need you to fix something. Maybe I don't need you to fix anything. I just need to talk about this. I mean, we all want to be heard. You said it exactly. And and so being heard is, is a big part of it. As a matter of fact, it's funny, Nikki, you just happened to bring up something that's on my mind where is that have you heard about this video game Fortnite that has been cited in over 200 what? divorce cases? No, I didn't know <laughs> wait, it was the first wait, I, just, wait. I know the game because it's up in my uh, upstairs all the time. <laughs> Maybe you haven't heard much about it because your son isn't married yet or no. <laughs> the divorce hasn't come through. But maybe that's yeah. why he broke up with his girlfriend. I don't know. <laughs> it, it could be. You got to check it out because what are what are people saying? The people saying that I'm I, I have so little of his or her attention already thanks to all the distractions. Now I have even less of it. So, you know, getting somebody's attention, period, is huge. So, you know, things like this are making us, you know, lose out on, on people's attention. But this is one of the reasons that people do want to be heard is, is that they, they want that attention. They want that connection, even if, if it's just for a few minutes. But getting back to your original question, what else discourages people? People think that listening puts you in a subordinate position, that it's always the speaker who is the more powerful. And that's just not true. Now, the listener, the mindful listener, is taking in all perspectives and is really the wiser, you know. And and so, so there are several things that deter people from listening. But how, what are some things that we can start to do or that we want to address? And that is, if I had to put it into a nutshell, I would say ADHDers and non-ADHDers try not to raid the conversation, R-A-I-B, and it stands for, R stands for rambling, <laughs> A stands for advice giving, particularly the <laughs> non-requested advice, I stands for interruption, and D stands for denial, denying someone their reality. Wow. Wow. Mm. If we can just keep that in mind, that's a game changer for relationships. 
Wow. That's, yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. And it seems like that, I mean, I, the, uh, I think about, you know, conversations with ADHD, the things that I have to fight with, it's the, the R is the big one, the rambling, uh, but the advice giving and the denial uh, of somebody else's conditions or, or place, those are, those are the major universals. And if, if I get tripped up, it's because I end up rambling about advice giving and denial. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. But there are ways to curtail that, too. But, yeah, isn't it something? So imagine if you could be heard uh, and heard without someone denying your point of view, denying your experience, and not interrupting you constantly, but perhaps uh, reminding you that you may be going down a path of, you know, down some rabbit hole that, you know, you may be losing us a little bit. We have to watch out for those listening stoppers. And, you know, the raid is a good collection of listening stoppers, but there's ways to address the rambling. Um, I would say to many of my non-HDA spouses is to say, hey, you know, when you've asked a question, and I would say when you're asking your ADHD spouse or partner a question, try not to have it too open-ended because that gives them all this wonderful imagination and, and 11 different ways to get to their answer. <laughs> way so too much runway. Way right? too much runway. Way yeah. too much runway. So, so be pointed about that. But if you find that they're going down a place where you you don't really see that answer coming, it's the signal. Because quite often my ADHD patients will say, oh, thank you for letting me know I was going down a, a different path or yes. a different story. Thank you for getting me back on track. And it's just such a, you know, a, a wonderful way to, to help people who are having struggles with their ability to get to the point, you know? Right. Well, and it's, I see it in my group coaching, especially because, um, you know, it's a group, so it's a very different dynamic. Mm -hmm. And, um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll let somebody speak and then, and sometimes I probably do because I'm a, I, I just feel bad interrupting. And so I probably let him speak a little bit too long. Um, but I am working on as a coach working on, okay, you know, in, in a very loving way saying, okay, that's, you know, we need to get back on track or we need to give so-and-so a chance to talk. And, um, and it does build that awareness. And I do talk about that at the very beginning of our of our coaching groups that if I see that I will, you know, politely stop it so that we can move on. Um, so hopefully it's giving them that awareness that, Oh, okay, this is what I'm doing. I need to be more concise. You know, I, I, you know, I think it's really interesting because there's a there is, you know, part of the experience of ADHD is finding the right context to be able to ramble. And uh, I find, it, you know, if I if I don't write regularly, if I'm not contributing to a conversation that that allows me the freedom to go off in many tangents and exercise that sort of creativity, then it bottles up and I, I end up like exploding on somebody who doesn't deserve that, you know, and and so <laughs> there is a kind of, and that's one of the things that, you know, back to the Discord community that I find so special is that those conversations go off in all kinds of crazy di directions and it is it makes it more valuable for those who are participants in the conversation to be able to exercise that so that they can you know train themselves I think that's one of the great experiences with coaching is to be able to refine the experience uh, and still have another outlet somewhere else mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely you know another element too that I use in my uh, group and individual sessions is Helping people become comfortable with silence. Oh, yes. And when I say to my clients, I say, boy, you know, you notice that people in the group are getting a little squirrely, you know, because it's, it's, it's taken a few minutes for you to get to your point, which we're, we're waiting for, because I know it's going to be a good one when we get there. But, you know, taking that in and, and they'll often say, well, you know, I'm just afraid to stop talking and allow the silence. And many of us, are afraid of that. It's very awkward. You know, I always thought about doing a TED Talk one of these days and starting off my talk with silence and, and, and just pacing the stage and watching people squirm and say, hey, how does that feel? Because <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Freak people so, you know, right like, out. <laughs> wouldn't that freak them out? But you know what? I'd say if you want to get better at your listening, figure out ways, and I'm happy to share, Ways of getting comfortable with silence. Number one, when you're asked a question, can you get comfortable to pause and kind of organize your thoughts? Or 
can you be comfortable with allowing other people to pause while they're trying to take the time to get to their point? Or are you going to interrupt them and, and destroy that whole wonderful flow they had going there? Getting comfortable with silence is a wonderful starting point to become a mindful listener. Because you know how it is. If you answer a question and you have more to say on it, you can't quite, you know, nail it yet. But that, that speaker or that listener allows you to take some time to think about what you have to say. You can actually get to the heart of that person's thoughts and feelings so much more if you allow them to go deeper and allow that pause. That's where the gold is. You know, yeah. it's so often hard for us to let, to allow silence, ADDers or not, to allow that silence to transpire so that we can really understand where that person is coming from. So I had to. I have to tell you, I was uh, in human resources for many years. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the things that I did a lot was interview people. And one of my interview tricks was to be silent. So I would ask a question, they would answer it. And I would just like, you know, slowly kind of write my note and just allow there to be a little bit of silence because the it, it made people so uncomfortable that they would start talking. And that's usually when I figured out who they really were and if they were going to be a good fit for our, for our company, because that, you know, they just start talking <laughs> about whatever, about whatever and incriminating themselves. In many cases. <laughs> yeah. So it is interesting because you're right. I mean, non ADHD or ADHD, it doesn't matter. Silence is really uncomfortable for people and they just want to start talking. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, that was a trick that we use many, many times. Brilliant, Nikki. <laughs> Anybody that's interviewing for jobs, just remember that. Oh, <laughs> Silence is okay. <laughs> great point. Wonderful point. Yeah. It's a it's a source of great social anxiety too. Not not a not part of the necessarily of the um, uh, you know the ADHD or, or as you say separate but certainly equal to the ADHD is that anxiety that comes with silence and and needing to fill it with something. And we're we're uncomfortable. And I think you know whatever that's a part of culturally we're used to a lot of sound. We're not used to silence. And when we when we miss it when there aren't words filling the void. You know I have a friend who now is has adopted. You know when he's uncomfortable he just in his head he, he tries to think about making robot noises and backing up out of the conversation he's so weird you know and, and he just feels very <laughs> strange about the uh, about the whole thing and and uh, uh so it's it's disquieting yes it's it very is. very hard so what i say to people who say yeah you know that seems to be the big heart of my trouble with listening and listening to myself is being comfortable with silence and i'll say hey you know what about uh, having some daily mindfulness practice Maybe even it's just 10 minutes of meditation, of trying to stay in that present tense, trying to allow the silence around you, to, so you gradually, over the course of days and weeks, start to become comfortable with that silence and to learn the value of it, you know, and how it can help us in understanding and connecting with others. Absolutely. So... I'd like to have you repeat uh, the four pieces of mindful listening and then i would like you to uh, or to to give maybe some guidance on where a person can start Mm -hmm. okay so the four characteristics of what i call a mindful listener is someone who can get that whole message not just the words but the tone of voice the gestures the nonverbal cues the ability to sustain attention over time the ability to make your speaker feel valued and respected and your ability to listen to yourself. Lovely. So yes, how does a person start? Because now I'm going into the how to. (laughs) How do we do this? Let's get to the how to. Okay, so we've kind of touched on them on some of them already. Yeah, some of them Number one, you know, getting comfortable with silence. I would say that for many of my students, I, I help them with mindfulness training. I help them manage their anxiety. And there's lots of ways I help people do that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I use biofeedback. I use a form called cranioelectrotherapy called, called Alpha Stim, which is a very interesting uh, passive method of calming the brain. 
But there's also medication. You know, that's a, a last resort. Um, walking meditation, things like that can be very helpful in helping them get comfortable with silence. Mm-hmm. Then I would say, okay, focus your energies for listening. If your attention span is splintered, if it's short, then say, okay, who in my life do I have a real purpose for listening to? Who should I be listening to? And who is precious and important enough for me to focus whatever energies and attention and span I have on that person? Because, you know, with ADHD, if there's something exciting, novel, interesting, a purpose, that's always better for concentration purposes, right? You're going to concentrate better on something that's interesting. So I say, create that interest. So somebody who's precious and important to you, you know, if you care enough about them, that is huge interest. Mm -hmm. Something that perhaps is not as much of interest, can you create a purpose around it? So like in in a class situation, many of my my students have trouble listening to um, enduring lectures. I'll say, find the purpose behind it. It's It's an hour class. Okay. Find a purpose. Is it to get a good grade? And why do you want to get a good grade? Because you want to graduate. Why do you want to graduate? Because you want a good job. We may we have to talk through those those um, uh, points in order to set their mind so when they go into those conversations or into those lectures, they're going to be a little bit more focused than the average student or the average person with ADHD. You know, you know? Mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. say also uh, make it easy for you to listen. Limit the distractions. And ask for help. Advocate for yourself. Ask people to maybe write down some key words or allow you to take notes because visually, if you have a picture of what they're talking about or a diagram or a flow sheet, wow, that really helps you process the information better. And isn't that something that folks with ADHD sometimes have trouble with is processing information, integrating it, consolidating it, so that they remember what was said. Mm -hmm. Um, I often ask my students to uh, use tailback. That's one active listening method that I like, is just to clarify, this is what I heard you say, am I correct? And if I'm not, please correct it for me, because I want to make sure I got what you said accurate, accurately understood. That's important for me. So for for students or anyone to ask back, say, did I get that correct? Tell back is a very good thing. I, also, I never knew that that's what it was called. I always just called it clarifying. <laughs> now it has a more, yeah, now it has a more formal word. <laughs> and I'll often do that too, Nikki, with my coaches. I'll say, hey, tell me back. I just want to make sure that that instruction or that script, that, you know, that explanation was well understood. Just tell me about, just so I know. I want to sleep at night. I want to know that our session, you know, is really productive for you. And and don't feel, uh, you know, I'm happy to repeat it if I need to in a different way so that, you know, we're on the same page. Very important to give them that license, you know, Mm -hmm. so that they feel comfortable doing that in their regular life with other people. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that because it's you're looking for you're looking for conversational milestones. And one of the things we talked about several weeks ago or several weeks, ago, maybe it was just this week. I don't actually know. Uh, my sense of time is all askew was this idea of feel <laughs> felt found, which is a sales tool that we've uh, that I, I used to use in sales. You know, I, you hear somebody say something, you say, I, I understand how you feel. I have felt that way in the past. And what I found is and what I really like about what you're saying in this tellback model is that, you know, when you are when you have something you have have to intentionally look for to integrate into your worldview, your experience, you're you're becoming a better, a better, more mindful listener, right? I, you know, I'm I'm listening for cues that I can be an act, a more active and engaging and thoughtful participant in the conversation, which is going to make me remember more. It's going to make me more interesting to talk to myself. I'll be better at parties and probably look better uh, in the process. You will. People will love you because you actually listened. You know, isn't it funny? You can you can ask five people at a party after a conversation. Do you remember what we talked about? And four out of five will say no. I just yeah. liked your dress, you know, or something. It's really amazing. So so to to let people know that telling back is a is a vital skill and one that can be practiced and actually improved quite quickly because it makes them focus a little bit on 
you know, if she's going to ask me to tell back, I better, you know, hone in my concentration and focus. Right. So get some practice, you know, and being successful. And that immediate conference. reinforcement, too. The act of me being a more interesting participant is that the conversations are going to be better and they're going to give more back to me or I'm going to be able to engage more in the learning in a class or something like that. Yeah. It's very it's satisfying and empowering. Yeah. Really. Okay. So I have a question. Sure. So we're practicing our mindful listening, right. um, but we're talking to somebody who is angry at us. Um, maybe we're angry at them. Well, a lot of ADDers, you know, feel very passionate, right? They, they can be, um, th their feelings are on their sleeves. So how do you begin to listen in this mindful listening, you know, the, these four, following these four characteristics, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Okay. Well, whether you have ADHD or not, every time we're listening to a disgruntled or angry person, our internal distractions go way up. All we hear is a loud voice. We know it may be English, and we're taking in that whole message like ever before, and it's very scary, and it shuts down our ability to process information and to listen beyond be, be, beyond the emotion. So what do we do? Well, first of all, don't avoid these people. <laughs> That's okay, because I'll tell you something. I think this is true. I think that every difficult interaction we have, or let's say difficult person, you know, usually these people keep popping up every so often just with a different hairdo, right? And um, I think these people are on our list or in our life, to learn a lesson from. Mm. As you become more of a mindful listener, you will find that there are less difficult people in your life. Because if you listen to understand, like Stephen Covey's tip, remember, from mm -hmm. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, yeah. if you listen to understand and just try to say, hey, I just want to understand where you're coming from. Please tell me more. <laughs> All of a sudden, that person's voice starts to calm down. The expletive starts to diminish. And people start talking to you and conversing versus the yelling and the screaming and the fretting and everything else that's, you know, getting in the way of having a problem-solving conversation. Mm -hmm. But to, again, be comfortable with silence. Oh, boy, when our barometers ratchet up, we want to interrupt. We want to get defensive. We want to join the screaming and the yelling or the expletive. And that solves nothing. But sitting back, making sure that your body language is in a comfortable state, listening out of curiosity to find out where they're coming from or saying things like, oh, that's interesting. Well, let me, let me make sure I understand what you're saying. And then asking to tell me more helps to get to the roots of the problem. Because quite often, anxious, angry people don't really know exactly what's bothering them. It may be the fact that you didn't bring their food to them on time or you missed that meeting or something like that. But there's usually something more to the heart of it. And if you allow that silence, you'll get to the root of it. And that person will be less difficult in the future. Well, I love I, it. it, yeah, it in a shameful effort to ingratiate myself uh, to you as an SLP. These are the conversations I love the most with my wife. Uh, you know, as a school-based SLP, and she works with a lot of SLPs who work in the schools, those are the conversations that these SLPs have to navigate with parents who are frustrated. They're frustrated by state of care. They're frustrated by access to care. They're frustrated by all these things. And they always have something on the surface that they're really mad about and something mm -hmm. very deep inside, which is becoming fierce advocates for their children. And I think about that every time I come into a conversation where there is always something here in, on the surface and something I have to figure out what is behind what's on the surface and how can I get to that, embrace it and and be a part of pr solving a problem? I mean, you may not get to the problem. I mean, it may be something that's so much deeper than they even want to share. But I think just acknowledging that there is probably something deeper than just what they're what they're expressing on the surface means a whole lot, too. Because then you can kind of step back and say, okay, I, I don't know what's going on, but it's obviously something bigger than this and being able to kind of let that go. It lets you practice Very, that empathy skill we were talking about earlier, right, too. Right, right. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, then, and in the case of this, and that's very common with your wife's situation, and that is there are things that your wife can't change about the policy. Right. The procedure. But by listening to them and trying to hear that, yeah, it's, I just want to be an advocate for my child, at least you've, they've been heard. And that's what brings the conversation to, hey, well, you know, now, you know, you're telling me that this is your policy. I can listen to you better now. And mm-hmm. and listening in this way helps people understand you and listen to you better so they can get to problem-solving mode a lot faster. Mm-hmm. I just want to highlight one thing you said that I thought was really um, powerful, too, is that when these uh when these conversations happen, it, it, we're we're here to learn from them. You know, their lessons. And I think that, you know, something that I talk a lot about on the show and, and uh, with my clients is we're always looking for progress, not perfection. And there's always going to be a conversation that you're going to think, man, I wish I could redo that. Uh, but I, I think that just remembering that there's a lesson there and to take that with you and to keep working on the mindful listening, you know, that maybe the next time it will be, um, it will go a little bit better and it'll go more the way that you want it to and you know all of that so i just want to you know highlight that i think lots of lessons to be learned for sure that's that's excellent nikki we learn from every conversation yes yes that's great this is so helpful oh it's it's such great stuff and and you know i i feel like uh, as we're getting to the point of of wrapping up here we should talk about the book uh in its its printing and uh uh, talk to people a little bit about what it's about and then we'll tell them how they can uh uh they can uh, get the it's now on audible right you did the the recording it's now on audible and we'll tell people how they can get to it uh for for free if they're if they want to help us too Yes, wonderful. Well, uh, the book just takes all that we've talked about and more in greater detail. It gives a lot of steps, a lot of different ways for everyone to become a mindful listener, as many different brains as there are. There's something in there for everyone. But one thing is that, you know, uh, if you, if you make one step, take one effort, take one piece from our conversation today, that can be the game changer, you know, just by maybe not giving advice. <laughs> that could be a game changer. Wow, that'd be huge. Yeah. Wow, sitting back and just letting that person talk, allowing silence or or the you know, one of the various things we talked about, that can be the, the game changer in your life and the life of others. But the book gets into that detail and it's enjoyable. A lot of great stories uh, about listening that, that are very inspiring. And yes, it's, it's on Audible. I think it's the only book on listening that's on Audio, audio, uh, audio in an audio format, which is kind of refreshing. <laughs> Doesn't that make sense? That's, that's weirdly ironic. <laughs> uh, you'd, you'd think someone would have gotten there uh, or I before so. that, but uh, uh, congratulations <laughs> on being up on Audible. And if you, uh, you. you know, we don't do this very, very often, but we we do have a sponsorship with Audible. And uh, if if you visit audibletrial.com slash the ADHD podcast, uh, you can uh, go in there and sign up for the free 30 day trial and they'll give you a book. So once you sign up, all you have to do is search for this book. You can get the Zen of Listening, Mindful Communication in a, in the Age of Distraction, uh, and you can get it for free. And you can keep it forever, even if you cancel your account. If you decide you don't want to don't don't want to be there anymore. But uh, there's 180 thousand uh, fantastic titles on Audible. I've been a member of Audible for you know, 18, 19 years now. It's an it's an amazing service that I count on uh, for my uh, audiobook credits every month. You can absolutely bet that this is. Uh, in my uh, my next listen section, uh, I'm absolutely adding Rebecca's book to my own account. And I hope you all will give it a shot too. So audibletrial.com slash the ADHD podcast. Uh, support Rebecca, support the show, uh, and learn a lot uh, about listening while actually listening. So there you go. Thank That's you, right. Audible. Uh, <laughs> this is fantastic. You've got some other things you want to talk about, though, before we wrap up. You have a fantastic uh, monthly newsletter. Tell folks about that. Yes, I do. The Mindful Communication Minute. Every month there is a wonderful tidbit about some practical uh, communication issue that pops up quite a bit and some advice for that. So you get that. And then I also have a blog because one of my specialties is entrepreneurs and building their core skills. Of course, communication is one of them. So it's called the Courageous entrepreneur so i encourage people (laughs) to sign up for that entrepreneurship you need to be a good listener to be an entrepreneur 
This is great stuff, and we will put all of these links in the show notes in your podcast player of choice. Just swipe over uh, to the show notes, and uh, you'll see all these links, or you can jump over to Take Control ADHD uh, and find the podcast, and uh, and you can find these links to all of Rebecca's stuff. Nikki, what do you think? Anything else we have to add here? Just the reminder of the ADHD Expo. Absolutely. That is also in the show notes. Yes, it is. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Well, this is fantastic. Thank you so much to Rebecca Shafir. Check all of the uh, links for uh, all of the fantastic work that she's doing. Get the book, audibletrial.com slash the ADHD podcast. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer and Rebecca Shafir, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. <laughs>